Soon after American forces defeated Santa Ana forces in 1835 and 1836, Texas declared independence in March 1836, and Mexico grudgingly recognized Texan independence a couple months later on May 14th. I was a big believer in Manifest Destiny, and it was a key campaign promise to annex Texas and expand America westward. So I sent John Slidell in 1845 to offer the Mexicans $30 million. When that land purchase didn't go anywhere, I sent in General Taylor to the Rio Grande to defend our borders. American military operations in Mexico were focused on two fronts. The first front was launched from Texas and was led by General Zachary Taylor. The second front was launched by General Winfield Scott across the Gulf of Mexico. We were attacked by Mexican troops in April of 1846 when they crossed the Rio Grande and killed 11 of my soldiers. At the battles of Palo Alto and Resaca de la Palma, General Taylor used his much smaller force to achieve a draw with the Mexicans, who suffered high casualties and retreated south of the Rio Grande. After Palo Alto, I declared war on Mexico on May 13th. We weren't going to tolerate this anymore. Mexican leader Santa Ana was in exile and persuaded the Americans to allow him back into Mexico to negotiate a peace. Instead, he returned to power and immediately raised a new army and marched north in early 1847 to attack Taylor's force at Monterey. The Battle of Monterey was the first major campaign of the war conducted on Mexican soil. My troops captured the city after heavy fighting. General Taylor split us into two divisions and we attacked the city from both sides. The Mexican troops were too far apart to support each other, thus giving us an advantage. I was upset with Taylor after the Battle of Monterey when he declared an armistice without my approval, so I transferred half of Taylor's army to General Scott, who was leading the attack in central Mexico. Santa Ana tried to take advantage of our diminished forces to attack me at the Battle of Buena Vista in February 1847. It was an intense battle, but we prevailed, and Santa Ana suffered heavy casualties and was forced to withdraw. After Buena Vista, General Taylor was ordered to remain on the defensive, partly because Polk had lost confidence in his leadership and partly because of politics. Winfield Scott was sent to the Gulf of Mexico to start his invasion. Scott was originally from Virginia and a lawyer by trade. He got his first military experience in the War of 1812. I oversaw the landing of our troops at the port of Veracruz in March of 1847. We promptly attacked the city, which surrendered shortly thereafter on March 29th. Scott's next move was to make a long and difficult journey to Mexico City. Many predicted Scott's demise because he was cut off from most supplies and was significantly outnumbered by the Mexican troops. We were low on supplies, which made our march very difficult. We then confronted Santa Ana at the Battle of Cerro Gordo, about 60 miles from Veracruz. We destroyed the enemy and they retreated quickly to Mexico City. I laid siege to Mexico City in September 1847 at Chapultepec Castle. We experienced bloody hand-to-hand -hand fighting to end the organized Mexican resistance. I had long wanted to expand America's territories to the west, including California. The British were having negotiations to buy California, so I had to act. I sent John Slidell in 1845 to negotiate a purchase, but the Mexicans were not interested. On June 14, 1846, Captain John Fremont led a group of Americans to the small town of Sonoma in Alta, California. The Mexican army immediately surrendered. For the next 25 days, California was an independent nation called the California Republic. I led an army of 1,500 regulars and frontiersmen west from Fort Leavenworth to Santa Fe, occupying it on August 18, 1846. Not a single shot was fired. I declared myself the military governor of the region where I created a new form of government known as the Kearney Code. We have a thousand mile campaign to Southern California in September 1846. At the beginning of July 1846, the U.S. Navy under Commodore Sloat arrived at Monterey Bay and seized it on July 7th. 
On August 13, 1846, the U.S. Navy under Commodore Robert Stockton entered Los Angeles with little resistance, though local residents would revolt, sending the Americans retreating in September 1846 during the Siege of Los Angeles. I finally reached the Colorado River at the present-day California border and engaged enemy troops in December of 1846 in today's San Diego County. Here, we experienced heavy resistance and were only saved by a relief force after being surrounded. Unfortunately, 21 of my men died at San Pasqual. Afterwards, we moved with Commodore Stockton and his naval forces to Los Angeles where we defeated the enemy at the Battle of La Mesa in January of 1847, marking the last major battle of the California campaign. The Mexican-American War came to an end when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in February 2, 1848, in Mexico City. Negotiating the agreement was not easy because the Mexican government kept changing hands. I sent Nicholas Triss, a diplomat, to negotiate the terms of the treaty. Many Americans wanted me to annex all of Mexico, but that wasn't realistic. When I didn't feel that there was any progress, I recalled Triss back to Washington, but to no avail. I told Triss to keep negotiating the treaty in accordance with Polk's original instructions. We successfully negotiated the agreement and got Mexico to see Texas with the Rio Grande boundary. In return for $15 million, the U.S. received territories, including those that make up all or parts of present-day Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. In the end, I was pleased with the treaty. The victory at the Mexican-American War was a huge victory for America and our desires to expand westward to the Pacific coast.